Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of Justice, you dawn from the Father before all ages, and from Mary at the appointed time. Make us worthy to celebrate this day in honor of your pure Mother with spiritual hymns, and to glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the exalted one who humbled himself and exalted the humble virgin, to God who became man and saved humanity, to the Most High who lowered himself and raised up the lowly, to the good one be glory and honor on this day and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. As we honor the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we ask that she intercede for us with her Son, the fruit of her womb, and we pray. O Lord, through the prayers of your mother, keep away from the earth and its people the devastation of wrath and all the danger, dissension, war, famine, and epidemics. Have compassion on us and heal the sick, help the poor, save the oppressed and grant rest to the faithful departed, who have left us and have gone to you, and make us worthy of a safe and peaceful death, that we may raise glory to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
O Holy Virgin, O beautiful lily and fragrant rose, the fragrance of your holiness has filled the whole universe. Pray for us that we may become the sweet fragrance of Christ that spreads throughout the world. We offer this incense for the living that they may remain strong in faith and for the dead that they may be granted salvation. And may we enjoy eternal happiness and praise the most holy Trinity forever. Kadishat aloho honor the Virgin, Mother of our Lord and God, for she carried the Savior, he who carries all the world. Lord, you Reading from the letter of to the letter of Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a clear conscience, wishing to act rightly in every respect. I especially ask for your prayers that I may be restored to you very soon. May the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good that you may do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
I ask you to bear with this message of encouragement, for I've written to you rather briefly. I must let you know that our brother Timothy, Timothy has been set free. If he comes soon, I shall see you together with him. Greetings to all your leaders and to all the holy ones. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with all of you. Praise be to God always. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And your From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. <clears throat> Remain silent, O listeners, for the holy gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, After this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him in reply, We also will come with you. And so they went out, and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, My sons, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. Then he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you shall find something. So they cast it. And they were unable to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is our Lord. When Simon Peter had heard that it was our, the Lord, he tucked in his garments, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net along with the fish within it. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over 
And he dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net had not been torn. And Jesus said to them, come and take breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they had realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over, he took the bread, and he gave it to them. And in like manner, the fish also. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. This is the truth, peace be with you. It is our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. There are obviously many, many things <clears throat> that we can discuss within the gospel and consider. The aspect of the fish which comes up often in the gospel times of concerning the, the counts of our Lord's resurrection have to do with the messianic age. The rabbis gave this interpretation, the Leviathan and that. But it's not something that we really want to discuss today. But you notice there's already fish on the fire when he says bring more fish. The aspect of conquering the fish is a messianic fulfillment of the day's coming. But again, it's not something we want to go into in detail. What I wanted to actually consider this morning was how we react to the things that are said to us and the things that we know and things that we think we know and things that we don't know and how we react and make choices. The reason why I meant to bring this up is because so often in all of these press conferences and all of these talks and the constant blah, blah, blah on the internet and on the television and everything else and podcasts, we say, we will follow the science. And this phrase, we will follow the science, what is this supposed to mean actually? Science is an observation of the material world, and quite brilliant at times. But it doesn't tell you what to do. I'm quite attached to chemistry, for example. But chemistry, studying chemistry doesn't tell you what to do. So the statement, follow, we will follow the science, is basically saying, we will act in recognizing that the sky is blue that tells you nothing to do. There's nothing to follow on the fact of observing something. There is so much more contained in human knowledge and how we act. And that's why I wanted to use this gospel because of course, as with all the apparitions, it's the very mysterious aspect that the people who look at our Lord, he's standing in front of him, they don't always recognize him. And they see him in different ways. And of course, they also acted differently. And that's why this gospel was apt for considerations today. Because when St. John is the first one to recognize our Lord, which is not surprising, the most disposed to see the Christ, he's the one who leans over and tells Peter, it's our Lord. And of course, the reactions are totally different. Peter immediately starts throwing on things because he's basically in his underwear. And so basically throws on things so he's a little more presentable when he gets to the shore because he's not going to wait. He's just going to jump into the water and swim the last hundred yards. That's Peter. His reaction to the same statement, it's our Lord. You can imagine the other apostles. It's like, okay, well, there he goes again. And then, because we're told explicitly, the rest, well, we're not very far. Let's just row in here. And they row in the last hundred yards. And of course, 
They probably beat Peter. He's probably still flashing around, swimming towards the shore when they get to the shoreline. Maybe yes, maybe no, we don't know. It's not in the gospel. But the reaction is totally different. The statement is exactly the same. It is our Lord. The man on the shore who's yelling across the water to us, did you get anything last night? No. Well, hey, throw it over the side and you'll find something. They don't know who he is. It's only once they all of a sudden, now there's fish and lots of fish and big fish. Of course, the fathers will interpret another aspect that this is an aspect of the church. The gathering in, our Lord had said three years before, come and I will make you fishers of men. So the reaction is that St. Paul, St. John recognizes immediately saying this has got to be, this is our Lord. And then again, the two different reactions. And we see this played out again and again and again all around us, not necessarily on religious levels, but how we react to the things that we perceive and know and see. And how we react has a lot to do with everything else that makes up our persons. Again, science, and I'll probably write this up in the bulletin. By this time, you're used to the fact that the bulletins go on for 35 pages. But look, you can read it in pieces. Read a paragraph, put it down, and go back to it tomorrow. But obviously, if I did what we did in the bulletin, we'd be here for six hours. So, next week probably we'll do these considerations of what, what we mean when we say science and knowledge and all of this. Science, the word, is just the Latin word for knowledge. That's all it means. It just means that we know things. And by observing things, now what we call, it's properly called the experimental sciences. We've developed these absolutely magnificent ways of observing creation around us, whether it's through telescopes, whether it's through microscopes, whether it's all the other ways that we learn how to observe God's creation. That's why I said last week, it's a stupid statement to say, we bring the numbers of COVID-19 down. Not God, not the faith. That's an absurd statement to make. It has no connection whatsoever with hospital entrances. So the same thing with science. Science just means we can see distances. We can observe microscopic being. That's all it means. It does not tell us what to do. Which is why at this point, so science, when it's understood that way, is amoral. Not immoral. Immoral means contrary to proper behavior. Amoral just means it has nothing to do with moral or, or proper behavior. And science is, in its very sense of knowledge, it's an observation of things. We know how things function. But it doesn't tell us how to act on that knowledge, which is why we live in a period of time when exactly the same scientific knowledge allows us to do prenatal surgery and more efficient abortions. The science doesn't tell you what to do with the knowledge of what you have of an infant's life in the womb. It's just a knowledge of what this child is. So like I said, in, a, in the world that we live, we use exactly the same science to more efficiently exterminate the babies and the exact same knowledge to perform life-saving surgeries prenatally on these babies. This is an insane and schizophrenic culture that lives this way. And that's why when I say, people will say, well, we will follow the science as if there's only one thing to do in a situation. And that's just completely false. It's a false statement. But it is said over and over again like a mantra, just this drumbeat, we will follow the science. Because then when you don't agree with what I'm telling you to do, it means that you are unscientific and stupid. Which of course it doesn't mean that. I mean, I may be unscientific and stupid, but not because I don't simply listen to what you're telling me to do. 
And so the idea of the understanding of how this comes in is the reason why so much more is involved of how we make choices and decisions in our lives. And a lot of that depends upon what is preceding, what is the precedent before. St. John's intimacy with our Lord is what allows him to recognize our Lord. The others don't recognize him, and they don't recognize him even after he says it to Peter. Notice that the gospel says only that he says it to Kepha. He doesn't announce it to the whole boat. He just announces it. He leans over and tells Kepha, it's our Lord. But it's an interesting detail later on while they're all sitting around breakfast. They're all here now. They're sitting with this man on the shore. And we're told quite explicitly, nobody asks him the question, who are you? Which is telling you that some of these men, even once they got to the shore, still don't know who this is. And the disposition of souls, the discernment of spirits, this brings you to the central heart of what the fathers write about, what we call discretio. It's our word in English, discretion, but it's not the same meaning in English. That's why the proper, more better, better translation for discretio would be discernment. The ability to take a situation and make a judgment in accordance with the Lord for Catholics. Discretio is this way to discern attitudes, this discernment of spirits around us. St. Ignatius of Loyola gives a magnificent section on his spiritual exercises on the discernment of spirits. It is a very profound and very necessary aspect to the Christian life. And so when we look at what they're doing in this gospel today, the reactions that are different to the one statement, it is our Lord, is a very important thing for all of us to keep in mind. Now, after the gospel, after this, uh, this sermon, or do the crowning of Our Lady, we see, feel sorry for Evan. Evan has looked forward to this for months, the little guy. Oh, we'll have to make up another ceremony for him. We love him. But we have other recruits, and so fear not, we will have more than just Abuna going over and doing a crowning. We will have a couple of the children come up. And Dame Fifa, of course, will bring you into a rousing chorus of, I don't know which hymn you're going to sing. Mary, we crown thee, so be ready. And we'll have just a short procession, like everything these days, it will all be what restricted and kind of mitigated, but we'll just do a little procession over to the side. And that's just the last thing to leave you with. Why do we crown the statue? Why do we try to set aside a moment in time to recognize this woman? Now, on the front of the bulletin, you have quite a nice photograph of Our Lady of Harissa, Our Lady of Lebanon. And she stands over with her hands, it's on the mountainside, very, very beautiful statue. Lots of people go there, including Iranian Muslim women, because it's still Maryam. And it's quite a beautiful thing to see. And her hands are out. Now what you see down below is Jabil, yes? Which is the ancient city of Byblos. When you look at the picture and you read your ancient classical histories, Byblos, that's Byblos down there which apparently is where the Iranians are going because it's a pretty nice place to go for holidays. But in the meantime, you also recognize aloho. You recognize God uh, while you're doing your work. So it's not just because of the association with the Lebanon mountains that we honor this woman, of course. But we honor her because she is the most perfect human being that has ever existed, created from nothing. Our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, of course, is perfect man, but he's also God. So he stands in a certain difference to the rest of us. But Mary is completely creature, created from nothing, made from nothing, human being 120%. And yet she is the new Eve. And she has the mind and the spirit of perfect clarity and lucidity, which perceived and knew and saw and reacted to the things around her not only with a lucidity of mind that we can not even possibly imagine, but of an uprightness of soul and spirit and of body, of action, in complete conformity with the goodness that she knew and experienced through grace and the knowledge that she had. 
So when we crown the Blessed Virgin Mary, it's not some over-exaggerated zeal for some specific person, as oftentimes we are attacked by non-Catholics. But it is a rationation that this woman is the epitome of what creation was meant to have been from the beginning. We were all meant to have been stainless and perfect and holy, like Mariam of Nazareth. But alas, we are not. And so in this work of the new creation, we recognize the beauty of God's handiwork. And for this woman, through no merit of her own, because no one can merit while you're still nothing, that through no merit of her own, she was made this brilliance and glory. And so when we crown this woman, when we recognize who this woman was, we recognize the hand of God in creation and what he had originally intended for all of us. So may she intercede for us and obtain for us the strength and the knowledge to be able to see clearly what is around us and to arrive at knowledge, to arrive at knowledge, science, knowledge. But with the clarity of it, may she intercede that we be transformed individually by the hand of God and his grace, that we may also walk in her footsteps and follow with the great desire that we also become that handiwork of God to be transformed, healed from our sins, and brought into the beauty of light and grace that the hidden one desires to give each one of us. And so may her prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, gentlemen, ladies,
Beautiful. We will continue with the creed on page 748. 748. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God is not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came there. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the glory of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. <clears throat> we confess one baptism for the sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shall transfer him in your pews in honor of the Mother of God. May the prayers. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary and Saint Jude and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
of St. John's Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you, to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, and may the God of peace be with us. O Lord, on all hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Holy, 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 mighty Lord. Glory 
to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood, 
So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my! upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin of Christ our God be for us the pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy an eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Grant her children and gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully, with justice and holiness May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the holy fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son. Glorious St. Stephen the Archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For 
all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world. Grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have forgiven, with or without O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in all sin and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of you live with your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Ay, sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our universe, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. 
Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Your Spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy life, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us, assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the holy cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
So I take a moment to thank the Gumbucha family for the ladies who did such a beautiful job with the crowning and having volunteered your brother to serve for the first time up here also. So may God bless you. It's been beautiful to have you among us. And may God keep you all safe and sane during these weeks. And may the Mother of God love you all. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Believe, believe.